What's up guys, it's James here and I'm back with another PlayStation VR tutorial. And as you can tell behind me here, I've got a ton of different controllers. And today's topic is how to set up your controllers to work with your PlayStation VR headset on PC. Now if you have not seen my other videos, I recommend watching those, getting yourself set up with your PlayStation VR on the PC and then you're going to be able to get into some great gaming um, with a multitude of controllers and depending on the type of game that you play, picking the right controller for the job and getting it set up and working. Alright, so stay tuned, it's going to be good. You don't want to miss this one. Alright, so like I said, we're going to talk about controllers today. And I want to mention that there are a variety of controllers that you can use, obviously. Um, you can use your PlayStation Move controllers, those are awesome. You can use your DualShock controllers. Uh, you can use an extra type of accessory, like a flight control stick. But first of all, I want to talk about the most commonly used controller, if you want to call it a controller, on PC, which would be the keyboard and mouse. Most people use keyboard and mouse for a lot of games. It's just what they have available to them. And there's nothing wrong with using a keyboard and mouse. The problem is when you put on one of your headsets, like a PSVR, now the keyboard and mouse makes less sense. You can't look down. You can't see the keyboard. Uh, you have to make sure your keys or your fingers are on the right keys at all times. And it can be really frustrating. Not only that, but it breaks that level of immersion when you're in a VR game and you're trying to look for the keys on the keyboard. It's not the best method of controlling the games that you play when you're in VR. So I, I wanted to talk about keyboard and mouse because it is an option. It's an option for anybody who plays because it's what you've got. But it's not the best option. It's probably the least best option that you can use when you're playing VR. Next, I want to talk a little bit about the DualShock controller. Now, this could be a, an Xbox controller, it could be a PlayStation 4 controller, it could be whatever you want. Uh, this is probably the second most common type of controller that you'll be using in VR. And to set up one of these on computer is super simple, super easy. I'm going to show you a piece of software now uh, that gets this up and running literally in five minutes. It's totally free. Uh, does a great job. Again, the reason I'm covering this is because I feel like most people who have the PlayStation VR may have a PlayStation 4 and probably have one of these. Therefore, it's an easy transition over to this type of a controller on your PC. Alright, so now we're going to connect our controller to the software on the computer. Now, the software I like to use is a free piece of software. It's called DS4 Windows. I'll have a link down in the description for that and uh, just double click it uh, it's going to load up right now there is nothing connected to it obviously it's uh, nothing is uh, turned on or connected right now but what we're going to do is we're going to take our DualShock 4 controller and we're going to connect it via USB with the charger cord that comes with it and um, I'm going to hook that up and watch what happens. Uh, I'll go under controllers here. And by the way, you can connect up to four controllers, which is kind of kind of cool. Uh, we're going to click click that in as if we were charging it. You're going to hear that it becomes visible. It's found it, and it says the controller is now connected. Now, the way that this program works, again, very awesome. Uh, profiles. You're going to set up a profile for your controller. And uh, basically, let me just show you how it works. If I click New, um, all I have to do here is tell it what I want each key on the controller to do. All right, so if I want like the X key, for example, to press my space bar for jump, uh, that will work. Uh, let's say I want the left controller to control the movement, WASD, uh, on the keyboard. The right stick might control where I'm looking, so it would control the mouse movement. So let's say I want to set the up to move forward, which would be W. 
So I press up. This comes up. It's asking me what do I want the up key to do, and I would click W. All right, and I would go through until I've got it all set up and all mapped out, and then I can go and save my profile. Now I've already got the profile made that I need, so I'm going to just cancel that, and I'm going to go to the Minecraft profile and show you how that looks. So now you'll see that my controller is controlling my mouse movements, as you can tell, which would control the mouse movements in the game as well. Okay, so let's just start up the headset. I'm gonna click start, I gotta turn it on. I'm gonna start up the he headset and we'll start up Trinus in Steam VR mode. Let's get that going. Here we are. And we're going to launch Steam VR. If you saw my other video, you know that uh, I have a video on setting up Minecraft to play with uh, the PSVR. Uh, so check that out if you if you haven't seen it before. Uh, we're going to wait for Steam VR to load. And as soon as that comes up, any second here now, it's just going to connect. And I should see my window with the two displays. Here we go. Not ready. Shoot. You know why? Forgot to press start on Trinus. Anytime that happens, you have to actually quit... Steam entirely, both regular Steam and Steam VR. Log it out, close it. I even closed Trinus just to reset it. Double click. Click start. You should see calibrating sensors. There we go. Now we know that it's working. We also have to make sure DS4 Windows, this program is up and running. Um, you can put it down, you can minimize it, but uh, we know that the controller is going to work as long as uh, that's running. Let's do it again, Steam VR. And we'll wait for that to load up, and we should see our split display, uh, which means that we have a connected headset. All right, so give that a second to load. And we should see that in a moment. Here we go. And uh, it's coming right up. Now, for those of you, again, who haven't seen my, um, my Minecraft VR tutorial, I'm using Vivecraft. Okay, so here's the window. I'm going to press shift windows left arrow on the viewport window. Okay, so I'm going to send that I'm going to send that extended display over to my headset, which as you can tell here is this split window and there it goes, it's gone. Um, oh, by accident, I brought Trinus over there too. We don't want that. So right now the uh, headset is ready. It says ready down here. We got this started up. The headset is is working. We're going to run Minecraft. There we go. And like I said, I'm going to be using the Vivecraft profile to get this working. We're going to hit play. There it goes. And Steam VR is going to take over and allow us to play Minecraft in VR. All right, now the hope is that the controller is going to be set up and working properly so that I don't have to look down at my keyboard every time I'm playing uh, a game. And let me tell you, once you get your controller set up properly and you map the keys correctly, it is awesome. It is, it is an excellent experience and uh, you never have to take that headset off while you're playing, which is a great thing. All right, so it's going to launch in Steam VR any moment now. We're going to get our little mirrored window. Here we go. Now it looks it looks strange here, uh, just because of the fact that um, the Minecraft shows up um, kind of small on this single display. But you'll notice that with the headset, when I turn it, it's going to respond to the movements of my head. And I like this latest update that they did on Vivecraft. When you move your head, the menu also follows you. Uh, that was a problem before where you had to actually be facing the right direction to see the menu. You might have saw that in my other vi uh, menus, uh, video. I'm going to go single player. New world. I don't have to have my headset held up here. I'm just showing you. New world. Here we go. Going to play that. It's going into the world. As you can see, my headset is tracking beautifully. All right. It's controlling great. Now, if I had my headset turned on with my controller, 
I'm now also able to control just like as if I was, you know, playing in a, on a console or whatever, and it works awesome. All right, so this is the best way to play. It is great. Like I said, you hook it up or you set it up once, make a profile for each game, have your key set up on your keyboard. Oh, sorry, I keep saying keyboard because I'm used to it. On your controller, and away you go. And it's awesome. All right, so hopefully that helps. Um, great option. Probably your best option if you have a control already. Hook it up and uh, get it going with that. All right, guys, the next option we're going to talk about is a dedicated controller specific to the type of game you're playing. Now, if you can afford this luxury, this is an awesome way to play games that would require this type of equipment to operate the vehicle or whatever. And if I had the room on my desk here, I would put a steering wheel with pedals as well, because for flying games, that really is your best choice, especially in VR, where you want to feel like you're actually there. Uh, here I have the SciTech X52, which is a flight control system. It's got the throttle on this side and the control stick on the right. Um, when you are playing in VR, any sort of flying game, this feels like you are controlling an actual airplane, which is exactly what you want when you're in VR. There's a number of games I can use to, to kind of demonstrate this. Um, I'm going to choose War Thunder. Uh, I think that that's a really good game that uh, makes good use of this. Also Elite Dangerous. Those type of games are great with the control stick. Now, with War Thunder, um, as with most games, if you are using a custom controller, there is a wizard, a control wizard within the game under controls that you have to go through and map the controls to your actual controller. But I'm going to uh, go ahead anyways and play it in War Thunder. One important thing, well, I'm going to bring down my throttle so I don't start the plane right away, but I'm going to make sure I am in work in progress client. Um, that's an important option here. Um, somebody told me that it works better in VR. It might be the only way to play it in VR with that on. So we're going to hit play and it should launch. Now you should see it in this headset mirror. I won't see this headset mirror. I'm going to see a full screen display, but it will not record on the screen capture. So you're going to see it in this smaller view. And as War Thunder loads up, uh, the first thing you will notice is that War Thunder was made for VR. Like, I can pick this up. I don't have to do any adjustments to this game. It just works. All right, so I'm gonna put in my password here. And you notice I kinda of have to hold my headset to look in that direction. But if I hadn't had my headset on, you know, obviously I would just turn my head that way. Um, but I'm gonna do a little test flight just to show you how it plays. And like I said, it is a great feeling in VR when you've got this type of control in front of you and it feels just like you're controlling that actual airplane, just like in real life. Not that I know. I haven't, uh, I'm not a pilot, so I can't say for sure how that feels, but I think it'd be pretty close anyway. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to go to test flight. We're going to say, okay, by the way, playing the game in VR with this type of a controller is amazing it is like totally changes the way that you um you play the game for sure so i'm just kind of throttling up here nice and slow one thing i will say about uh war thunder is if you go between f1 to f4 you can change your view and f1 is not a good view for vr f2 is your cockpit and i think that's pretty cool it looks great makes you feel like you're actually flying the plane but I feel like the view is kind of kind of low in the seat and also this gun in front of you is kind of annoying it, it looks like it's almost too close so what I do is I go in view f4 which gives me kind of an in front of the plane view now you notice my view is a little off to the side that's because my headsets over on the side but I'm gonna show you if I bring up my throttle with the left controller here and I use the right stick to pull back, to lift off. Like I said, if I am in VR right now with my headset on, I feel like I am flying this plane right now. It is the best control option for this type of game. Just like a steering wheel is going to be the best type of control option for a racing game. Again, 
you want to have a high level of immersion and not having to worry about your keyboard and having the right types of controls is going to really help to make you feel like you're there. All right, I'm just going to quit and we're going to look at one last option here. All right, the last option we're going to look at is connecting the PS Move controllers. And uh, to be honest with you, uh, this one is probably going to be the most important for those of you who play a lot of Steam VR games, especially those that are meant for uh, HTC Vive. And um, relatively easy to set up. Um, I've seen probably at least a dozen channels explaining how to set them up. Uh, to work with your PC um, and a couple of them actually turned me off or scared me away because it seemed really complicated it's not that difficult unfortunately it's going to require you to make a bit of an investment um, in terms of buying the hardware in order to make it work the first thing you want to get is the PlayStation 3 i camera um, I managed to get mine on Kijiji for 10 bucks. I got four of them, um, so 10 bucks each. And so they are relatively cheap. You just have to find somebody who still has them. You're also going to need the actual PlayStation Move controllers. Um, you could possibly still have some, maybe if you had a PlayStation 3 and you had the Move. Unfortunately, these went up in price quite a bit when PlayStation VR came out. Uh, just for two, you're looking at about 100 bucks. So it'd be good to get it used if possible. Also, you're going to need some sort of a Bluetooth adapter. Um, I've got the Asus Bluetooth adapter. Again, um, all the things you're going to need, I'll put descriptions in the comment, uh, sorry, in the description below, I'll put uh, links to that. Um, but let's start with the camera. All right, uh, first of all, with the camera, what you're going to want to do is um, position the camera or cameras, depending on how many you have, um, evenly spaced out apart from from you where you're going to be um, doing the VR um, and keep in mind that these cameras only have a 70 degree field of view so optimally they're going to work between five to six feet away from you um, it's very important when you hook up your camera you're going to want to set it to the wide format view which is the blue dot on the lens. So you're going to, want to twist it till it goes to the blue dot and uh, that's going to work a little better for you. Um, what I found is that the um, the cameras will actually sit within a, a sort of a standard tripod um, size so you can actually position them on the head of a tripod and that's a little more portable if you don't want to have a permanent setup like you know anchored to the corners of your room or whatever. But what it will allow you to do is use a lot of the HTC Vive games that are on Steam um, as you probably noticed in my other video when we've got that when we got that set up um, a lot of those games require the motion tracked controllers so you want to make sure you have some form of motion track controllers and that's going to open up tons of games that you couldn't play otherwise alright first of all we want to set up the camera and what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all get, get Trinus running before anything else. Steam VR mode, start it up, get it running. Uh, oh, I think I turned mine off, so I'm going to actually turn it on again. And I'm going to just get that up and going. Calibrating, oh, there it is. Calibrating sensors, it should say in a second. Here we go, we'll do that again. Calibrating sensors, and the headset is now on and tracking. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to set up our camera. And all the links to the software, it's all free, I'm going to put in the description below. But we are going to use a program called USB D View. Uh, so you're going to hook up your PS three eye controller uh, cameras to your computer then you're gonna go into this USB D view program and you're gonna look to make sure that it actually detects them as being hooked up and so they're going to show up in this list as USB camera B4 0924.1 interface 0 okay so that's what you're looking for and that tells you that it has detected that camera as being hooked up. Close that. Next we're going to go to a program called Zadig 
Not even sure if that's the right way of saying it, but uh, Zadig. And we're going to hit yes. Uh, and this is the program that actually assigns the driver or the correct driver to the camera so that you can use it with the tracking software. So we're going to go options, list all devices. Once again, you're going to go in this list and you're going to find the USB B camera B4092, same one, interface zero. All right. And the driver here will probably say none. So what you want to do is on this side, on the right of the green arrow, you want to choose Lib USB Win32 version 1.2.6.0 and install driver. I'm going to reinstall just to show you what it's doing. And what that's going to do is it's going to assign a driver to the camera that will be recognized by the software. Now you have to do this for each camera you have connected. Currently, for this tutorial, I only have one camera. All right, so it's going to go quick and easy. I'm going to close that once I've installed it. And basically what this does is it assigns a driver that the tracking software is going to uh, be able to recognize. Then we're going to go into the folder PS Move Service. And I'm going to go to Test Camera just to make sure it's working. And there you can see my camera above me. It is going to be tracking my movements. And you can see that it's working correctly. If I had more than one, let's say I had four, I would have four windows, four cameras showing up there, and uh, we would see them all tracking. All right, so that looks good. All right, now that we've got Zadig tracking, uh, sorry, now that we can see that our camera is working and Zadig assigned the driver, we can now actually go and connect the controllers, which obviously is the most important part. Um, so we're going to go to the folder PS Move Service, like we just were for testing the camera, and we're going to run PS Move Service. Now it's very important that you have Trinus running already, because otherwise it's going to try to take over control of the headset. And also you want to make sure that um, Steam VR is closed and Steam. Uh, because we're going to be installing drivers to there as well and we don't want to mess up anything if it's running. Uh, so let's go to PS Move Service, we're going to double click that and it's going to go sort of into this console window that shows us what it's doing. Here it is. Alright, actually I'm going to close that, I'm going to relaunch it. Just give me one sec, I don't like it, it looks like it was still running. I'm going to let it run like that so I can see what it's doing. Don't worry about all this stuff. Not too important, uh, but it's working. Then what you want to do is you want to take one of your controllers and you want to hook it up through a USB port to your computer. Alright, so I've got a USB charging cable here. It's just a standard camera type cable. I'm going to hook it up and the camera should recognize that it's been connected. We're going to go to PS Move Config Tool and we're going to set it up. You're going to get this window that comes up. It says Controller Settings. And it's going to ask you to pair the USB controller, the controller we just connected. So we're going to click that. It's going to ask us to press the PlayStation button on the controller. And every time the LED light stops flashing, I'm going to press it again. And this is a strange progress bar because it'll go up to five, it'll go down to two, just jumps all over the place. But you got to trust it and it will eventually connect. All right, so every time it stops blinking, you press it again. It actually doesn't take that long. There you go, it's done. Now, once it's done, you can disconnect the charging cord. It is now synced to your Bluetooth device. Uh, it doesn't need to be hooked up anymore. And I see people doing all sorts of crazy spinning around with their controllers. Um, I'm going to show you how to just calibrate it with the gyroscope that's inside of this controller. So set it on a smooth surface. Click Calibrate Gyroscope. It'll do its thing. You don't have to touch it. Just let it sit there. All right, when it gets to 100%, what it's doing right now is it's it's measuring the gyroscope and uh, you're not supposed to touch it. Now, I know people do the magnetoscope as well. I have done it with the gyroscope and it works perfect. Uh, so I don't know if it really needs it or not. 
So it'll get to 100%. And you're going to hit OK once that's done. And check it out. I can now rotate it and it's going to follow my movements on screen for that controller. Now I go on to controller number two. Hook it up. I'm going to just say return to main menu. Controller settings again. Down here, pair USB controller. Same exact thing. Press the PlayStation button every time this LED stops blinking. And it doesn't take long. Like I said, once you've done this once, it's done, it works, and to redo it literally takes five minutes once you've done it before. It's really easy. Alright, so it's almost done. And once it stays on, there we go, it's now synced, I disconnect, and I'm ready to go. Almost. Next what we're going to do is we're going to actually set up the tracking of those controller so we're going to return to the main menu we're going to go to tracker settings and you notice that we have two controllers to choose from because that's what we've got one is magenta and the other is cyan we're going to start with the magenta controller we're going to go calibrate controller tracking colors and we're going to get this little window that pops up and it's going to light up the magenta controller what we want to do is we want to tell the camera what it's supposed to be tracking and the way we do that is we right click the colored controller, the, co the controller that's lit up. And then we change our video filter mode to masked. And you'll see that it's done a pretty good job right off the hop at detecting that controller's color. Alright, so awesome. That was one click. Save and apply. Now we're going to go back. This time we're going to do the cyan controller, calibrate controller tracking color. Look at that, it's already found it. We can, we, all, we didn't even have to right click it, it already found it. We can adjust, if we're noticing parts of it are missing or whatever, we can adjust the range of color, the saturation, the exposure, all that. But generally it does a good job of tracking it right off the hop. We're going to save it, we're going to apply it, and we're going back. Alright, it should now have both controllers saved with their tracking information. We're going to go return, we're going to go exit, and now back in this folder, what we need to do is we need to install the drivers for Steam to recognize what we just set up. And so there's a file here called Steam VR Initial Setup Win64. It's going to ask you to find your Steam folder and you're going to hit OK and what it'll do is it'll install the drivers. Now I don't want to do it because I don't want to overwrite what I've got but I'm going to click reinstall drivers and this is kind of what it's going to look like. It's going to put all the proper drivers for Steam to recognize your PlayStation Move. Alright now that we've done that we got one last step to do and this is a very important step. If you miss it it's not going to work. All right, we're going to go to the Steam folder. All right, so I'm going to navigate to my Steam folder. By the way, you can just minimize this, and uh, it should be fine. But we're going to go to Steam, and inside the Steam folder, you're going to look for the config folder. Inside of there, you're going to see a file called Steam VR with a .vr settings ending. You want to right click that and you want to open that with um, notepad. Now mine's going to look different than yours because I've added some custom options here. But the most important thing is that when you open it up um, under Steam, I'm just going to take this out because I'm going to explain that in a second, but under Steam VR you want to put this line of code activate multiple drivers colon true comma and I'm gonna put that in my description so you can just copy and paste so you don't have to worry about it now I found this fantastic site that explains other things that you can do within that steam VR settings file things like remapping your buttons 
for for like a virtual touchpad, for example. You know, one thing about the uh, the Steam VR controllers is they have a virtual touch. So there's a left, up, right, and down. So you can remap this to have a virtual touchpad. And I thought that was super useful, especially with one of the apps that I use that I'm going to show in a second. Um, so yeah, this is good stuff. Uh, they also have ways that you can remap each button. All of this is useful information. Again, it'll be in my description below. And uh, so I copied and pasted and I put that virtual touchpad in there. And now all you do is save the file. Okay, so I'm going to save that. It's very important. If you don't want the virtual touchpad, make sure activate multiple drivers is there because it definitely won't work if you don't have that. All right, I'm not going to save because I don't want to, I didn't make any changes. Now all that's left to do, make sure PS Move service is still running. We're going to launch Steam VR. Now I apologize, my screen might flicker a little bit while it loads. Uh, I'm going to have to send the viewport over, but I'm going to turn on the mirror display so you can see how it looks. We'll wait for that to load. And once it loads, we should see these lights come on on the controllers. All right, that's okay. We'll start in offline mode. We don't need to worry about that. It's going to load up. And here comes VR. There's the lights. Awesome. Okay. Now we're in our our headset display here and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to send that over to my headset I'd rather work in the mirror to show you it's a little easier now I, I kind of find this funny um, in order to calibrate your controllers you need to hold them up to your head if you had the headset on you hold them up to your headset and on the right and left side, there's a start and a select button. And you press those at the same time. Okay, so I put it up to my head like so. Press both. And now you'll see that the controllers track perfect, almost perfectly. I have to do the other controller as well. So I'll do that too. Just one second here. <laughs> I find it kind of awkward to do. Now, there you go. They are tracking beautifully, exactly. And this is off one camera. A uh, little shaky, but the more cameras you have, the, the more stable it gets. Um, if you ever have to recenter or recalibrate, you just hold the select button for a couple seconds, point it at the camera, and that will zero that controller once again. Super useful, especially when you're in games and, and it goes off a little bit. Uh, super useful. I'm going to put those down for a second. And again, obviously, with the headset, we see those in a virtual world rather than... In what we see here and the nice thing about this is well you'll notice that steam is detecting that there's two controllers attached which is exactly what we want now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how it actually works within an app and the app that I'm going to use is uh, Google Earth VR and by the way it's not oh well it's not a game obviously but it is a fantastic free app I strongly recommend you try it. It's amazing. It works great with the with the motion controllers with the PS moves. Oh, it's it's amazing. And it feels like you are right there in the city that you go to. It's just unbelievable. So, it's building the earth. You'll notice that the controllers have now changed. They look like um, actual Vive controllers or or Steam controllers. I'm not even sure what those are exactly, but uh, now what we can do is we have all the buttons working on these controllers and it's really hard to do when I'm not in VR but I'm gonna go to Manhattan here I'm actually gonna just close this off so that it doesn't block our view but you'll see they're kinda jumpy because again I'm on one con one camera but I can navigate like the city of Manhattan here I can pull it towards me I can zoom out a little bit I can go basically in VR through the entire city. This is amazing. It's unbelievable. Honestly, I can't, ex I can't show you here. You can't experience it the same as seeing it in the headset. I'm going to rotate my view and just check this out, for example. I can grab the sun and I can change the time of day. Now, I'm just showing you New York, but we could do this for any, almost any city out there. 
can navigate the whole globe. I can click this controller and now I go to a top-down view of the world. I can zoom out. I can rotate the entire world. Again, I'm not doing it any justice by showing it to you this way. It is unbelievable in VR. Anyways, I hope this was helpful to you guys. Different options for controllers here. Lots of different choices. Hopefully one of those is going to suit your needs for the PSVR. Um, please like or subscribe to the channel. Comment below if you have some VR experiences that were pretty awesome and uh, maybe you want me to feature on my channel. Um, I'd love to hear about it. Um, I think this is pretty exciting stuff. So stay tuned. I got a lot more videos coming. Hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching. Till next time.